There we go. Back in the shed again. Um, this time we're going to be working on the dive hooker that I promised you. And this time, I'm going to record it all. Alright, what we've got to start with is part of the dive compressor system that was originally on that frame until I pulled it apart. Got a nice Clisby compressor with a 5.5 horsepower Honda motor. Second hand, as you can see, there's all the bits and pieces that come off the old unit. Reason for doing this one is that the old aluminium unit is um, crusty to say the least. And the nice, I if it'll focus, maybe, white powder. Not good to breathe in with aluminium oxide. So we are going to build with the aid of a lot of parts, shiny stainless steel one. Some nice bins to go along with our pipe, which we see in another episode. Polished stainless steel, bit of shine. Should outdo the old salt water a fair bit better. So we'll get our heads down and get busy. Well that was quick and easy. Just again, the enemy spots, give them a whack with a center punch. Between these ones, I'll cut big long slots so that the uh, motor can tension the belt. A bit of movement, I think about 40 mil of movement on this one, which should be ample sufficiency. We will go from there and see what we can do. Alright. As you just seen, we've got three holes in. We're not using any special drill bits on this one either. Literally high speed steel drill bits. Trick is large drill press, lots of pressure, very slow speed on the drill bit. Punches the hole through 316 six mil plate without any hassles at all. A few hot bits stuck to the uh, plastic. Problem I've got is this hole, it's too far to the edge to fit under that. So what I'm gonna have to do is try and do that one by hand, which is gonna be a mission and a half. I gotta figure out what size these ones need to be. These are 10 mil holes. I think these ones are smaller, only eights, but I'll find out for sure and then we'll punch them in too. All right, all the holes are drilled now. These ones will stay as is. I'll just clean off any burrs that might be on them. That's the compressor. These ones are the motor. You see me drill this one again by hand because it's too far to fit on my drill press. What we've got to do with these ones now is connect these two together. That's in big slots, which we'll cut with the angle grinder so that the motor is then adjustable to tension the belt, which we'll have to sort out a size when we're ready. I'll mark this up for some nice slots, get the grinder out, we'll cut them out, and hopefully I measured everything right. Let's do it. Righto, got them all cut out, all cleaned up, took the burrs off both sides. So this one stays as is, there's no slots for this one. I've got to make some little posts, probably out of some nylon, because the pulley's a bit bigger than the um, 
base of the compressor. So I've got to space it up about 40 mil, I think it is. So that'll sit up off these. I'll probably weld these bolts in from underneath so they end up being studs. And these ones obviously have to slide back and forward so they'll just be normal bolts. But yeah, that's as simple as that gets. What we've got to get into now is um, making the base frame, which will start with our two inch. Later on we'll use the one. We'll um, get my pipe notcher out. I've only recently got my house with my own gear, so we're still figuring it out, but we'll get there. This is my pipe notcher. It doesn't look special, but works very effectively. All right, so we cope these all in. Did a bit of clean up work just off camera. See nice copes if it focus. Put a tack here on all four. Flip her over, do the same. Make sure she's square again and then just a few more tacks here and there until we can um, fully weld her out. Um, the other thing that has to go into the tank is a couple of bungs. Over here we need a half inch bung and probably on the end of this one we'll put a little quarter inch bung. So the tap's just there so we can drain the tank out. Pretty simple. This one, however, will go into there. What it is, if you can, if it'll focus down the side there, it's a valve down in there. You undo this cap, there's a spring and a little valve. It won't let, once the compressor pushes air in this end, it goes down into the tank here. It won't allow air to go back from the tank to the head of the compressor, which usually leak. So if your compressor shuts out, it's not gonna lose, you're not gonna lose all your air. What this little side one is, I'll put a tap on that, so that if, for whatever reason, the compressor stalls, the motor stalls, you can release this tap, which takes all the pressure off of the head of the compressor, makes the motor a lot easier to start. I'll explain and show you a little bit more as I build it, but that's where we're up to. I'm also gonna make the end caps, obviously, for these. Drill holes in here, and that becomes your reserve air cylinder. All right, let's get back into it. All right, what you just seen me cut then well, to cut these off the end of the big plate, uh, what these will end up being is the lid for your carbon filter. Um, so you've got to have a good bit of filtration on this, obviously, because it's breathing air. So what you run, the air goes through this, which I've showed you before, which is your water and oil separator stops all the liquidy stuff going through then you'll run into what I'm making here which is essentially just a tube empty tube that the air will enter through the bottom travel through a couple of felt pads to knock out any particles like dust or anything that may come through the other filter then it comes up through a little bag of carbon or charcoal which is what's inside this stocking. Won't use that one because it's a crusty old second hand one. Um, then through another couple of felt pads to stop any dust from the carbon coming through. Um, what this will be is this will be the lid. This one that I've marked up in the centre, I'll drill a 52mm hole or use a hole saw. So at the pipe end, not these ones, but the pipe end will come through. I'll weld the pipe in. This one will have a fitment on top, four holes for four bolts, another hole right in the center for the um, air to exit via one of these little guys. 
up to the distribution tee where you plug your hoses on to go underwater. It's raining outside now, not hot as hell, which is good. It makes it a lot easier to weld in the tin shed. Um, all right, we'll chuck it up and keep going. All right, trying to ignore the noise. It's currently raining here, tin shed. Uh, what you just seen me do was cut these holes, which are for these guys. So when these go on, air can still pass through them both. I sort of skipped that one because I kind of want to tack both plates together so that when I draw the holes they exactly match so I've sort of just skipped that for a minute going back to this, get this all ready to weld I will not get these burrs out from inside yet which I need to go get a file for because I don't have one useless I know again, it's still getting gear from the old man's place eventually we'll get there but yeah, we've got most of it ready now ready to go um, Nearly ready to weld. I've got these caps to cut out yet. Uh, this bit of plate. Cut those out for the ends. I've still got to cut a piece of this one. Two pieces actually, because I've got to make the upright for the filters. Well, both filters. So there's the upright that welds on up for the um, water separator. Then there's also the tube that they're for. So I've still got a little bit though. We'll slowly get there. Um, I, as I said, I gotta get some files and things like that. So I'll um, see you when I get back here. Little tacks here, just on the tops. Made sure it was square, you see me playing around with the tape measure a bit. Once I got the square, flipped it over, did the same weld again. Um, check the square once more, then a couple of internal tacks if it'll focus down in here. Might be easier to see the external one. But just a few tacks here and there. It's pretty solid, I mean it's only got, what, 16 tacks? But it's come up pretty solid. If we look down the tube, you can see those holes open up into the welded on parts. It's pretty simple for construction. There'll be a fair bit of TIG welding involved, just nice and steady stain I work. But we'll get through it slowly. Alright, let's get back to it. Well, it always happens right when you don't want it to. I've just ran out of gas. This weld, beautiful cover. And when we go back to this side, see the gray, scaly ship? It's about at that point that it ran out of gas. You start getting a lot of the impurities come through in your bottle. Because as much as they like to say that the bottles are pure argon, there's always impurities in there, and they're always in the last part of the bottle, so you find your weld turning to shit, especially when you're doing stainer, you can see it straight away, the colour changes, and your arc sort of flutters a bit. That's when you need to stop, swap a bottle. Unfortunately, I haven't got a spare, so I might cut this one short, and we'll bring out a second part of this video um, when I get another gas bottle. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.